Number two, this one is the negative exponent rule. Remember what do you, you remember? What do you do with the base when you have a negative exponent? You flip it, and then you make the exponent positive, right? Bless you. This one is not that. That one has a negative and an exponent, but they're in different places. So that one is just order of operations for the second one. And then you simplify after that. So that's a little heads up, and then you can try that one again. Okay. Thank you. I'm oh, sorry, I thought I said this. Sit tight. No. No. Um, less than 10 minutes. What is your answer? Yes, that's right. Right. Ten square roots of five. That is correct. Thank you, sir. Um, so how many of you factored a, with a factor tree all the way down so you couldn't go anymore? OK, I think that's what Daniel's doing, right? He had all the twos and fives. There was a pair of fives, so he brought out one. A pair of twos, so he brought out one of those. And then you multiply them, the five and the two. Um, if you like to factor just so you get to a perfect square, what's the biggest perfect square that goes into 500? Bigger than that, bigger, a hundred, a hundred. So, what is the square root of a hundred? Ten. So it doesn't matter which way you do. Thank you. Ethan, number three, please. I feel like I'm passing the baton. Yeah, both, please. Perfect, thank you. Okay, shush and look up here. Shush, shush. Here's the thing I need you to remember about rewriting with the properties. You're not actually doing the math, you're just rearranging it to illustrate the property that we learned. So commutative property, remember, 
when I told you at the beginning of the year, like my commute to work can be different, but I end up in the same place. The order can change, okay? So what happened here that he did was, on, inside the parentheses, he switched the order of the numbers, right? So it's negative seven, six. You can do that for addition. You can also do that for multiplication. You could have also done this and it would have been correct. Okay, let me show you what you could not have done that about 90% of y'all made this mistake and this was bad. Now that feels okay because I switched the order of the five and the six. But the reason why you can't do that is because this six was in an addition or subtraction problem. This five was being multiplied. So you can't switch those two things because they're not part of the same little universe, right? One was an add subtract universe, one was a multiply. You can only switch the order straight for addition or straight for multiplication. You can't mix them. And then distributive property, he distributed five times six right there and then five times negative seven right there. Did anybody get an answer for number two that they feel confident about? Yes, that, yes? what'd you get? One, 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 five. Gosh, dog it. G Willikers. So I think, I think this is an excellent example of getting the answer wrong on accident. Well, no, the, the answer was right. I think you got it right on accident. Yeah. This is why I have y'all show your work. Let's talk about this one, okay. Focus. Focus, focus, focus. Are you ready? This is an important problem, so I do want you to pay attention. There's two different things going on here. The first one has a negative exponent, and that is when you flip the base and you make the exponent positive. So the five becomes what when you flip it? one over the five, the base part, just the base. When you flip it, because it's five over one, when you flip it, it becomes one over five. And the exponent becomes positive. So that was our negative exponent rule. But this one is order of operations. And let me tell you um, what this is different from. This is not the same thing as this. Those are two different things, okay? This one with the parentheses gives you a positive 25. This one in the problem gives you a negative, and you did that part right, gives you a negative 25, because you're doing the exponent first, so that's 25, and then the negative is negative 25, okay? So then now I've got, now you multiply across the top and bottom, so negative 25 over 5 cubed, which is 125, and then you simplify those, you can divide 25 out of both of them, and it gives you negative 1 fifth. Oh, wait, that's not, what, that's not what you had, was it? I had one over 25. Yeah, oh, yeah, you were all wrong. Sorry. I, I apologize. I was wrong in saying you were right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was my bad. I apologize. I apologize. But thank you for coming up and showing us your work. I appreciate that. It's, it's good to see. All right, so... What we're doing today is identifying if an ordered pair, an xy point, is a solution to equations or inequalities, okay? So we're going to do it two different ways, one with math and one just by reading a graph. So on the math section, I have two different kinds of problems. I have one and two are equations, because that means they have the equal sign. Three and four are inequalities, so they have the, the greater than or less than. And the way that you check if something's a solution is you figure out which is the x and y, you plug it in, you do the math, and after you simplify, if you get something that's true, that means it's a solution. If it checks out, like if, like if it equals itself. Okay. 
or in the case of inequality, it's a true statement. But I'll show you. I'm going to show you one. Um, now, these look like it's what the answer is, A, B, C, or D, but it's actually four options, and you're checking every single option to see if it works. So on number one, I'm going to do A for one and A for three, and then give you a minute to do the rest on your own. And this is the kind of work I need from you. If this was a quiz or test, I don't need to see all the math. I want to see at least the step where you plug in your X and Y. So for one A, yeah, we were going to check all of them. It'll go real fast. So for X and Y here, to check if it's a point or a solution to that equation, So to check if it's a solution, we're going to plug it in. Okay. So for A, what am I putting in for X? Negative 2. What am I putting in for Y? So that's negative 16 plus 40. Does that equal 24? Yes. So I would circle that as a solution. There might be more than one. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, we are. And I'm going to talk about what? Did you have a question? Is all that we can just like throw like negative 16 plus 40? Yeah, I want to see the plug in step. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then on inequalities, I'm going to do 3A. I'm plugging in 3 for X, 4 for Y. And then that gives me 12 plus 8, which is 20. Is it true that 20 is less than 8? No. So that does not check out. So you would not circle A. All right. So take a moment, do one through four, and then we'll I have some of y'all come up and show us what your answers were. You mean it should be A, D, and C? Okay, so let's check on C. So eight times eight plus four times negative ten. That's sixty-four minus forty. Is that twenty-four? So that does check, right? Okay. How do we feel about number two? Is it B and C? Are we agreed? Did y'all get B and C? Who got B and C? Yeah? Number three, B and D, raise your hand if you're agreed. Who's in agreement for number three? Number four, A and C? On number four? Okay, so let me check that. So Y is one. So these are your X and your Ys. So 1 greater than negative 4 minus 1. Yes, that's true. So D is true as well. Before I scroll, be sure your answers match these, okay? A, C, D on 1. B and D on 2. B, D, 3. A, C, D on 4. Okay. I'm taking those word for it. All right. So here's how we do the graphing part. This requires no math. You just have to be able to read the graph, okay? Now, here's the difference between graphs of equations and graphs of inequality. An equation graph is just this line right here. But an inequality graph is the line plus one of the sides being shaded. And that shaded side means any point in here is also a solution okay, to the original function. So looking at number five, a solution is something that's actually on the graph. Give me one point that's really on that graph. Zero. 0, 3. 0, 0, though, is not. So it's a non-solution. Negative 5, 1, what is that? Solution or non-solution? Solution, okay. And that's a, a non-solution? Oh, dang it. Oh, dang it. Oh, dang it. <laughs> I'm not even going to try and rewrite that one. I don't remember what Daniel said. Five, five. I know it had decimals, but I don't, I don't remember. Um, okay, quick question. Yes. Did I do something wrong? Five, five is a solution? Let me look at let me look at the actual worksheet because it's hard to tell on the smart board. No, I think five five is a solution. Yeah. Four four is not. Okay, that works. 
I, I, sorry, Star Lord, but it's okay. So hot. Okay. So I have black stuff on my shirt because my jacket's broken. It's like tearing off in places. Okay. Um, so solution, non-solution. This graphed um, dotted line right here, that means that any point on that line When the line is dashed, any point on it is not a solution, okay? If it was a solid line like that one, then a point on there would be a solution, okay? So give me something, so, and then anything in the gray is a solution. So give me something in the gray. One, negative two. One, negative two? Oh, let's look at zero, zero. That's an excellent point. Why is that not a solution? It's on the line, and the line is... Oh, that you did. That's okay. And the line is dashed. <laughs> <laughs> um, negative 5, 3, is that a solution or a non-solution? All right, give me one more solution. 4. I can't even, okay. I, I can't even remember what you said, but yes. That, that, 